These are totally dangerous. Okay. These stairs should collapse right down. I would have flagged it right away. And he said? Everything's to code, everything's fine. He's wrong. You should have caught this. This is wrong, and it needs to be addressed. Having felt that our home inspector missed a bunch of things, we're worried that perhaps he might have missed you know, some other glaring issues that is concerning for us. Jennifer was looking for a house that was old with character. Steven, what did he want? He was, he was just thinking it was safer to buy a new home. No matter what, they got combined together, found a house, hired a home inspector. They did the right thing. They brought him in. He caught quite a few things. There's a few things he didn't catch, and these were extremely important. There's problems. I'm here, and I'm going to go through this place. I'm going to find what's wrong, what the home inspector missed, and I'm going to fix it. Uh, Jennifer and I were talking about having children. I had said to her, before we decide we're gonna start you know, with a family, I'd like to move into our second and likely final home. So uh, an ongoing, <laughs> ongoing battle that Jennifer and I have had um, relates to the type of house and the age of a house. Steven swears by a new home. He thinks it's the greatest thing. You buy a new house, you get your warranties. And I thought that getting a new house um, everything would be done to the most recent code. What made this house so remarkable was that we looked at over 40 houses and uh, we couldn't compromise at all. We simply couldn't. And then we, when we walked into this house, we both looked at each other and said, you know, let's put an offer on let's this do house. It. Walking in here was a little bit of a needle in a haystack for us. The home inspector went through the perimeter of the house, um, did a walk around. He had noticed a few things here and there and things that were documented and were sound advice. At the end of the home inspection, we basically asked him if there were any deal breakers or if there was anything that might go wrong in the near future. And he you know, said it was a fantastic house, it's well built, it's in great shape. Everything was kind of turning out to be perfect. Yes, right. Hello. I'm Mike. Nice to meet you, Steve. Good to meet you. Pleasure to meet you. Thank you. Since I have my coat on, why don't you grab your coats and come on out? Great. We'll look on the outside first. Great. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so you like new homes and you like old homes. Yes. So we compromised on a new home. Yeah. Somebody, like, did you Somebody's bet? Did you give. <laughs> He's got to Somebody's got to give. Choose your battles wisely. Ah, uh, you know what? This, what is it, five years in yeah. the neighborhood? Five years That's old. what it looks like to me, but. Now, I read the report. The inspector's got not a bad report. To me, it's still hard to read because it's just check this box, check that box, minor notes, and it's just, I hate sloppy. You know, take pictures, document it, give me the right information I need. Yes. You have leaks. Mm -hmm. a Sounds like a lot yes. of leaks. Many leaks. So quickly tell yeah. me the leaks now, and I'm going to tell you the things that I see right away. We're sitting in the, the living room, and we have a big rainstorm, and we look up, and we watch this watermark as it grows and grows and grows in the middle of our living room. Which, of course, uh, starts a scurry through the house. What else is leaking? And then we made our way to the garage and we found that there was water coming into the garage too. So we go to the basement and lo and behold, there's a pool of water forming around our basement door. And uh, um, literally, my heart kind of, you know, it started to flutter. I could see dollar signs in my in my mind, and I'm thinking, yeah. you know, yeah. these are things that we didn't anticipate, and these are things that we were hopeful would be flagged in the home inspection. Yeah. Had we known, you know, about all the various issues that we've encountered after the fact, would we have bought this house? I'm 100% certain I wouldn't have walked into this house at all. Right away, I see sloppy brickwork. I see a very sloppy roof line. That's an area for penetration. I'm going to assume you're leaking right at that point. Yeah, probably. <laughs> Bad okay. sign. Bad sign. So sloppy on the outside. Let's go on the inside. Actually, let's check out your basement door. I want to open that up, OK? Sure. I didn't honestly anticipate him coming to the front of our house and say, immediately, here are all these issues that I found. My perception of, of new houses has certainly changed. You know, I'd be petrified to buy a new house. I really would be. 
do we have any issues with the drain? And we thought this was going to be a problem on days where we were going to get a lot of precipitation and snow. Um, and then uh, one day we just got a light drizzle and water was coming into the, into the basement. Somebody's come in afterwards and cut in a basement door. And it's OK because you, you have really a step back foundation, right? So our grade is much lower in the back here. Now, the inspector, mm -hmm. the home inspector, actually noted that your grade is coming into the house, which it is. What I really don't like about this at all is you have a one inch sill at the bottom. As snow sits here, and we get a lot of snow here in Canada, as snow sits here, what is it going to do? It's going to want to come in under the door, and it will. Water is our biggest enemy when it comes to a house. They came in, they cut the hole, they put the door in. Where did they tie the drain into is a great question. Did they dig down far enough for this concrete? Because we have minimum code procedures, which I hate minimum code, mm -hmm. but we have them for a reason. If it's not four feet, it scares the hell out of me. All this comes out, we're digging down. Did you talk to the home inspector about it? Did he say anything about this? Yeah, actually, he did. He, one of the things he mentioned is that I should be uh, injecting spray foam underneath the sill here because... That's uh, only for a trap. That's not for watertight. Yeah, and that's, I think that's what the... But he said nothing about this little sill here. No. During the home inspection, um, there, were some ev there was evidence of watermarks on the floor. He had said, look, there's a ring on the floor here. You can see that they had a potted plant here. They simply overfilled it. This is wrong. Yeah. You know, I can tell you this is wrong, yeah. and it needs to be addressed. Building inspector came in here. He wouldn't pass it. Uh, your stairs scared the hell out of me. Your rail scared the hell out of me. Don't, please, use those stairs again. You know, Jen just opened the window upstairs and looked down and noticed that there was issues with the flashing the day of the storm that had he gone up on the roof, he would have found immediately. I would have expected that. Any inspector would have been able to pinpoint that that is a potential issue. Who built your deck? We, it was here when we bought the house. Look at this. These are your cold stringers. Where are your stringers tied into? Uh, right now, the bottom of the deck. They're supposed to be against the plate. OK. Do not go on your stairs. These are totally dangerous. This should have been in the report. Don't, please, use those stairs again. We have no vertical 4 by 4s here, nothing at the bottom, no vertical 4 by 4s in the corner. You're held by nails on the corner and 2 by 2s Yeah. So just lean against the rail. You'll probably break the you rail. You can feel it. Yeah, you can actually feel it. Totally does not pass code. This was not built with permits. I would have flagged it right away, and I would have told you you have an issue with your deck, and it's very dangerous. How many times do we play on a deck? Kids pushing each other. They push against that rail, off it comes. Let's go in the back door. You had concerns about cracking in the concrete. Cracks in the floor don't bother me at all. OK, think about concrete. It's going to shrink, and when it shrinks, it cracks. And it finds the path of least resistance. Your cracks are superficial. They're very small, not a big deal. As long as water's not coming in, you're OK. OK, so we're leaking at the back door. We're leaking, obviously, signs here at the side door. Once again, I think, at this point, now look, that we're leaking from the bottom of the threshold of the door. Could he have seen this? Yeah, it was wide. Everything was wide open here. He didn't really spend much time around here, looked at the electrical quickly, um, and said that everything was satisfactory there. Yeah, electrical seems to be fine at this point. I, I, I noticed the regular check he put in at that possibility yeah. of knob and tube. Yeah. Well, that's impossible. This house is five years old. And he's an engineer. Yeah. You know, I'm not knocking him, but I'm knocking him. So let's look upstairs. I didn't see enough already. So we have cracking in the grub. He had told us that uh, it was going to be a quick few minute job just to regrout that, and I thought, well, horse crap. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Why did it crack in the first place? Looks like the tiles have given away from the um, the subfloor. So if we regrout it, what's going to happen? It's just going to do it again. That's the answer I want to hear from the home inspector. Not to take a few minutes to grout it. Yeah. All right. I want to see your garage because we have issues in the garage, and I know I'm not going to like them. I also read in the report that uh, he suggested to make sure you plaster all your drywall, look for any holes to stop gassing from your vehicles and getting into the house, which he's right about, OK? I really like that. What I do see that this, it appears to be that the home inspector had missed is you got one hell of a sore spot up here, and it's a leak. <sighs> you should have caught this. When you see anything to do with moisture, I want you to know about it. And the first thing I'm going to look for when I'm in the garage is water signs. Yeah. So, 
I'm gonna have to do a thorough inspection on my own. I'm gonna go through the whole house, especially what I've quickly seen, what you told me about. I'm gonna come up with my own report. We're gonna open things up. I'll bring in Dame and we're gonna open it, so I need to see it more. The next time I see you guys, it'll be once everything's opened, okay? And Thank I'll you tell very you a much. Lot more. My pleasure, and Thank a pleasure you. to meet you. Thank Keep you. smiling. All these incremental costs that we've incurred as a result of moving to this house um, have been a real burden on us. I mean, a real strain on our um, on our relationship. You know, we made this decision together, but I was a you know an, a, an advocate of a new house, so we wouldn't run into these problems. I kind of feel a sense that I got us into this. I'm just going to start with the outside right now. Take a ton of pictures. Everything's in front of my eyes. Make my own report. We have a vertical crack in all of the mortar across the top, all vertically here, right up around everything. It's cracked everywhere. Definite water penetration here. This is going to be the same on all the windowsills throughout this house. Well, we definitely have water penetration at the base of the door. It's always recommended that if we have a proper door on the outside, then we have a storm door in front of it. It's called a storm door for a reason. It stops the storm water from coming in. There's no protection of hood over top of the door. So what's going to happen when that rain beats the door? It goes down the bottom and inside the house. Simple storm door. This is the area that water was coming into the living room. You can see the homeowner did some caulking repair just on the flashing. Now, when they did ask the home inspector about uh, the, his flashing notes, he just said, well, when you ch change the roof, change the flashing. You don't change the flashing. You make sure it doesn't leak. It's definitely something that needs to be looked at. We see the cold zone. There's outside. That's blue. That's the cold zone. Anything yellow, the lighter the color, it's hot. The best time to use the camera, honestly, this camera, is in rain. Because then it'll tell me right away, if this is all blue, water's coming in. I'm relying on two days ago of rain, and I don't think it was enough. I may have to do a water test or simply just open up one area that I'm going to pick, have Damon open it up, and we'll do an inspection for possible mold. Holmes! Mr. Bennett, how are you, man? Every hour in the house that has a lot of water issues and our standard crap that we're so used to seeing. So they're lying on the couch one day, and they watch rain coming in. It's where the flashing meets in the roof. And right. So let's bring in the graves to okay. uh, take a good look at this area. Uh, it is new. It is not an old leak. The home inspector did not see it because it was not there. So. OK. Stairs. No, we got an issue. Oh. <laughs> That's about an inch off ground. First, I need to find out what they did. Let's get Martin to scope the drains. We may have to pull it, buddy. Look at this thing. Is this thing even safe? No. Keep the guys off the stairs. Man. Matter of fact, pull the freaking stairs. I'm going to, okay. right away. We'll reinforce the bottom a bit more, plus the 24 inch on center. Yeah. So let's get a couple more beans in there. I don't mind if you make it now 12 inch on center. I'll show you more on the inside. Where's the intake? Right beside a gas line. Yeah, there's nothing that says you can't do it. it. Because it's an unfinished basement, right? Only if there's a leak on this system will it pull the gas in. If there's a leak on the system, there's a problem anyways. But it's just not a smart way of doing it. Get that fresh air intake from outside and pull in fresh air. That's why they call it fresh air intake. See, but this is just becoming a repetitive thing. It's funny how people stop me on the street and they go, is there just one thing that stands out more than another? I said, no. No. Every HVAC, plumbing structure, mold. This deck is extremely dangerous. Having felt that our home inspector missed a bunch of things, we're worried that perhaps he might have missed, you know, some other glaring issues that is uh, a bit concerning for us. Okay, this deck is like the worst deck in the history of decks. It is very dangerous. So guess what? We're, We're taking doing. apart. We're gonna take apart the deck. Okay. So we're gonna really redo this deck. We're gonna keep the boards, keep the framing. 
we're actually gonna add to this. So in between, we're gonna make this 12 inch on center. That's what Mike wants. It'll pick up a lot of the strength and take some of the bounce out of this deck. I can move this deck with my hands, meaning the bolts that they have used never grab structure on the inside. And when you're bolting a deck, you wanna grab the inside plate because you want this deck to hold. You want it to become part of structure. Now, you can obviously see how dangerous this is. Always finding in some drain or another, right? Yeah. <laughs> so what did you find in this one? And this is my favorite tool. It tells me the story. You're looking at the perforated pipe, which is uh, part of the weeping system. Uh, and uh, what the contractor did here is he installed this drainage uh, and reconnected that to the, uh, to the existing weeping system. The inspectors won't like that. They won't approve that because what you're doing is you're introducing a larger volume of water. Against um, your foundation. Yeah, that was not anticipated in the beginning. Um, plus, because this is wide open and, and we will get debris, we will get sand, we will get mm -hmm. you know, uh, build up of stuff. It will get easily washed into your uh, your foundation drain, your weeping right. tile, and then that will get plugged up. So Which we don't want. We don't want we don't want to put moisture against foundation. We want to try and get it away. Exactly. So you know that's that's one of the reasons. Second thing is I don't like the way this thing's been created. There's not even there's not even a proper elbow. There's not even a proper section of the pipe that would bring me up to this level. It's just literally a hole punched in, um, in a in a in a perforated pipe. The only option I have is to bring this uh, drain inside underneath the footing. Yeah. Um, put a sump pit inside, and then the pump bring the water out uh, through the uh, through the wall. Away from so the house. we're bringing it back into the house and ejecting it back out which we don't have a choice, do we? We don't, no. Um, it's, it's... Now, that's not the news I was hoping for. I was hoping at least this was tied in so I could reuse, because you know what? It's gonna lead me into plumbing. It leads me into jackhammering this house. I mean, nothing is cracked here. It's I'm not saying that anything has been done wrong with the concrete. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, the plumbing is under this, the damn concrete. There's just this, this, this problem that needs to be addressed, to be honest, yeah. Well, okay, so I have some work for the guys. We're gonna jackhammer this out, unfortunately. In this situation, putting in a sump pump is the only way to get proper drainage for this pad. What we would normally like to do is connect the drain on the outside pad to the plumbing in here. So we need proper pitch, proper slope on our drains for anything to want to drain towards the street. Now the problem we're having is that our pad in the back is lower than the plumbing in the street and nothing would drain. And this is why this house was never designed for a basement walkout. There is a basement walkout now, and I have to deal with it. There's no sense in closing it up. They want it, it's there. I have to work with it and fix it. That is why we have to bring the water into a sump pit and pump it back outside to an area with the appropriate drainage to take this water away from the house. Every single garage we ever go into has issues. Now we do have a small leak in up in the uh, roof above the garage. So it's actually peeled some tape and guess what? The floors are cold up top. So what are we doing? It's coming down, spray foaming. But I do need everything the hell out of here so that we can get this down. Let me, let me load you up. Okay. Bring it on. I was kidding. Oh, come on. Well, you do it. Oh, my God. Don't do it. Be this, careful. No. Steven, don't. I can't see. Over time, if this was never dealt with, it would continue to grow mold. The leak would still be happening. It would get worse, and it, it would mold throughout the whole area in here. I got to fix that. Oh, ho, ho, ho. They've already spray foamed. Good for them. Wow. Look at that. Now that is what I like to see. It wasn't done the way I would like it, but at least they did it. I'm going to stop here. Everything seems to be fine on this side. I'm actually going to work from the door back to get rid of the mold and get rid of the drywall, look where the leak is, and find out what's going on at that end. 
Now I see obvious signs of water staining on this wood here. And over here is the exterior where the roof is. And actually, I do see a little bit of staining there on that roof. Could have happened when they were actually building this place. So I got to do a water test outside. And uh, who's my victim today? I think it'll be MJ. You ready, MJ? Yep. Oh, yeah, it's, it's coming in here. Now, rain would never come into an area like this. I'm oversaturating the area to pinpoint the leak. I'm putting three days of rain in 30 seconds. Now we can get to fixing the problem. I can stick my hand behind all of this metal. There's uh, some broken mortar here. Good uh, access point for water. There's ob quite obvious openings here that it wouldn't take much of a rain at all really to create a problem here. The flashing itself is in, in really decent condition. It's pre-painted metal. It's decently caulked in most of the area, so we don't need to replace the flashing. It's really just checking out these little vulnerable areas and making sure that they're all sealed properly. The homeowner had, uh, had done some repairs on the, on the rear flashing. The repairs seem adequate. The flashing itself is in good shape, and the caulking itself is in pretty decent shape, so we'll leave that one alone. We have all kinds of gaps and cracking around all our sills, right around this whole front face of these windows. There was not enough mortar in those joints, because if those mortar joints are packed properly, and they're packed fully, it'll take a lot longer for mortar to erode. So right now, I have a lot of work to do with caulking these windows. Or should I say, Carl has a lot of work to do caulking these windows. Carlito. The biggest one you're going to see is a crack down the left side of that vertical, OK? Cock that whole sill, cock that left side, and make sure we cock all these windows. After that, we've got a whole house to do, so. Sills are very important, and it matters on every house, because as soon as you have water penetration into your house, it's going to rot wood, it's going to eat away at drywall, cause mold, it's going to cause all kinds of issues. That's why I have Katie and Sherry opening up the window, because that is the west wall. It gets a lot of weather. So right now, they're opening that for me, and I can actually see if water's penetrating at the back of the house. So it looks like we have significant water staining right in the corner here, and it's actually started to rot the wood a little bit. So it's probably been leaking for a little bit of time. So Mike was right on the money here. What does that tell me? I have to replace the silk. The reason this floor is cracking is due to the subfloor. They use nails into OSB and it's moving. We can't just come in here, remove the grout and regrout. It's gonna happen in two weeks again, so we gotta pull these damn tiles. Look at this. Brutal. The fact that I've been able to pull up about six tiles so far without it even adhering to the cement means they did not do this properly. You see what they did? They didn't back butter. And you can see, when they put their bed of mortar down, they put the tile on top of it, and yeah. it never actually adhered to the tiles. The back of the tiles are dry, right? The back of the tiles don't even have an inch of cement on them. That's a bad sign. So we have a bad subfloor and a bad tile job. Which leads to us smashing up a five-year-old tile job. This is the second day on this pad, and I'd say it's bad. We gotta get under the projects, guys. Yeah, it's uh, this is a nightmare. Martin's dug the hole, let's take a look. No, we dug the hole. Yeah. I'm not gonna give Martin credit for that. Yeah. <laughs> but we have about 16 inches of concrete here in some places. It looks like they totally wrapped around that pipe when they poured this. So there's our weeper tied into a weeper. Pull the rest up, pull the stairs. Okay. We're gonna have to make sure we get a, a third step in, which means the stairs have to push back. This is not going to be fun. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> you beat this up really good. Yeah, this has started. I mean, I'm happy with this. It's, it's already strong enough. OK, let's just get the homeowners. We'll show them what we've done so far and give them some options. OK. Thank you. Hello. Hi. Steven. Hey, Hello. 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 Hey, Steve. What happened? Ah, uh, yeah. Oh, uh, Damon sort of convinced me to go ahead and pull up your tile in the front, which means your bathroom and everywhere else. These tiles were laid so improperly that I was able to lift 90% of them without cracking. 
So we're gonna we're gonna put down proper products. We're gonna give you a new tile in the front. It's sort of an extra bonus. Now, come on over and we'll take a look at uh, underneath your window. I did have Damon open up because I wanted to take the obvious worst spot, and that would be the west wall. That's the most amount of weather we're gonna get. And due to our brick sills, I wanted him to open it just so we could visually see, A, do we have any mold? B, do we have water issues? And Damon? Well, we do definitely have water issues. You can see you got a little bit of rot in your corner, so your sills are definitely leaking. Uh, you're caulking around most of your, 95% of your windows is bad. Really? So we're in the process of repairing that. Mm. Well, there's a hole in the ground. Mm. It's your swimming pool. That's your new pool. <laughs> Look, like we even built you a little seat. We're like a hot tub. We call that a cold tub. <laughs> What they did at first was to dig on the outside of this small foundation wall just to confirm how deep this wall is, because it has to be four feet. Then they moved to the uh, drain, which is in the floor, and you see the hole there. Mm -hmm. There's a few things wrong. So when they cut this hole in the wall for your new door, they dug down, they picked up that weeper, they brought it up and looped it up, which is too close to the ground. The problem with that is if a lot of water gets in there in winter and it's so close to the ground, what happens? Freezes. Freezes. Mm -hmm. So that's not good. That means if in the winter you have a massive thaw here and you didn't shovel that area, yeah. it's not going to go anywhere but where? Yeah. Inside the house. So here's what we have to do. A storm door is going to help, but it's not going to solve everything. So here's our biggest issue is that we're going to dig the floor down. We're going to confirm that the foundation is fine. Two, we now got to dig down and put in a proper drain and tie it into the house. The problem is, is that the main line on the inside of the house, and that's the sewage line, we can't tie into that. It's higher than the landing. Water does not run uphill. So what we have to do is put a sump pit in the basement, direct the drain from down here into the sump pit, and pump it back out again. That's remarkable. Uh, I'm blown away. I didn't realize that such a, what we perceived as a relatively small problem is as big as, you know, that's a significant issue. One small problem that you said is a big thing to fix because they did not do it right in the first place. But it's very uh, funny on the inspection report, it was listed as a small issue at the back door here. And look at the issue we're actually mm -hmm. into at this point. I don't know if I'm overly keen with having a sump pump in, but if that's one of the things to remediate the problem, then that's the way we're going to have to go. But it sounds like it's going to be a real challenge. Thank you. Keep smiling. Thank you. Thanks. Really appreciate it. I'm Thank you. Again. The most surprising thing today was probably that back door. It was obvious that it was wrong, uh, but I wouldn't have guessed how much it would take to fix it. How's this going? Uh, it's going. This is like the never-ending jackhammering, pulling up concrete story. I mean, Carl's still at the back digging out 18 inches of concrete. My God. All right, sorry, man. We still have that concrete over there, too, guys. I want you to stop in the back for now. I want you to take that up, grind out that uh, little threshold piece. We're going to put a new one in. All right. Okay? Because that'll eventually crack. Oh, man, this is like never ending. The way they had the old fresh air tied in was it was just coming out with a 90 drawing air from the basement. So we drilled a new hole, ran a new vent, so now it's taking fresh air from outside. They were having a problem where the basement was really, really hot and the upstairs were a lot cooler. The reasoning you're getting a lot of heat loss um, in the basement alone is you got a lot of gaps in the ductwork. So you got a lot of air leakage. Each duct where they connect it leaks. With the basement being open, you're gonna get a lot of heat loss down here. It's air that you could have distributed throughout the rest of the house. You're not having to keep your thermostat up at 25 when you can leave it at 22, 21 and have it at a comfortable temperature. So sealing up all these joints, all these connections that are open, are going to give you a better airflow. This is a room above the garage. They were complaining that this room was cold. Basically, with this human, it's, it's going to determine our cubic feet per minute and our temperature. Our first readings came in at 345 CFMs. 
and our second readings came in at about 417. So you're looking probably about a 20% increase on airflow. Therefore increasing the heat going throughout the house. Um, you know, this should be done in new homes, old homes. Um, anytime you have an unfinished basement, you want to seal up that ductwork. What we're doing is we're setting up for the sump pump. I basically need a channel from that door to right here. So you're basically cutting a channel through the concrete. You're cutting a hole for this, and then we're going to dig down. So the original railing had no posts. It was only spindles, like funny enough you see in most of these houses surrounding this one. Um, since then, we've restructured the underside of the deck. Now we've got our posts in our 4x4s. Four four. What we're building is a better railing, a safer railing, and stronger railing. They'll be here for much longer and uh, give them a lot less to worry about. I'm not even halfway through the whole pad. It just never ends. It hasn't been an easy job, that's for sure. I, I have my fingers crossed that I'm not going to be working that late. So Colin, this is my weeping tile nightmare. So you guys came in yesterday to start digging this out for me. Normally after we uh, finish the excavation, we'll find the top of the weeping tile is level with the top of the footing. Right. But in this case, the actual weeper is higher than the footing all the way around and they sloped it upwards towards the drain in the bottom of the landing. Yeah. So it was wrong in both cases. The weeper is too high to begin with and the way they teed it in and, and they brought the weeper up doesn't allow for circulation around the house. Well, the weeping tile should be level. Weeping tile yeah. doesn't have a slope like plumbing pipe. By raising up the weeping tile the way they've done it, it the weeping tile is not continuous at that point. The water's not traveling around the house. So what we're going to have to do is we'll correct the weeping tile in this area and we're going to tie it right inside to a drain. It's very common to have uh, a weeping tile system go into the house, into a sump box, and then discharge it through the foundation out onto green space on the property. In this case, there was no other option other than to install a sump pump in a box. It's, it's the only way you're gonna get the water away from this area. We had a cracking tile floor, and for obvious reasons. Minimum coat is used in all these houses, and it's gonna allow these floors to flex and move. You wanna use glue and you wanna use screws, and that's gonna get that intimate contact with your subfloor to your joist, and that is gonna help take the flex out and stop your tiles from cracking. We also use basically a plastic product underneath all our tiles to allow the tiles and the floor to move separately from each other so you never get cracked tiles. Well, what we tried to do here, as we're bringing this back to where we want it, which is steps and a concrete pad, is making sure the drain was done properly, which we've done. We've brought the actual drain into a sump pump here and connected the weeper as well into the sump pump, making sure that there's no water under here so that it actually is gonna to drain to the inside and we can actually dispose of the water outside in a proper place instead of having a pool right here, possibly getting into the house, causing ice to form under the pad and heaving it and cracking it. You want me to wait on this one? No. I knew you weren't gonna wait anyway. Call where do you want it? How about that? Right there. 
You know, if I sit here and pretend I'm supervising and look deep in thought, it means I can take a break on the wheelbarrow for a second. There you go. Now, we're at a downward slope here. All the water was pooling here. Of course, it's going to leak because there was absolutely no lip from the concrete pad to the top, the bottom of your door. We now have four inches under the door, and that's a proper lip. We're going to put a storm door on this at the end of the day. We're going to cock the sides of the door, making sure that there's no possible way for water to get in that. And this is what we had to do to make it right. What the builders have done here is absolutely wrong. You want to actually see this plastic wrap actually come underneath your window. You want to wrap this plastic right up under your window and around your window before you put the windows in. That way, if there's any water penetration, it's not actually going to reach the wood, which you don't want it to hit. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put some tuck tape right along the seam where the plastic meets the wood here and just seal it there. Now, when we put our, our new sill in, when we put mortar there and then caulk that, any water it does happen to get in there, it'll at least hit the tuck tape and come down, which is what we want. I can actually say that this house is really close to being waterproof. They had a lot of water coming in at different spots around this whole place, and it was our job to fix it. We're almost there. We're doing final things. I have Carl up on the roof. He's fixing the caulking at this point. We have the sills in. The sills are perfect. It's a limestone sill. It's a very dense stone and it's gonna just keep all the water off that ledge. We've actually pitched it on a nice angle. Water's gonna shed right off. We now have the back face of this wall completely done with sills. And we have the front one done with caulking. I feel so much better about that. These people can now sit in their living room, look up at their ceiling, and never have a worry about water penetration above them again. Here. Love. Here. Um. <laughs> That's for making me do this in the rain. Well, at least it's love. <laughs> I'm really being bit in the butt a little bit here. We're way behind on this. It's going to be one hell of a day today. It's a, it's a bit of a miserable day today, yeah. I think really anyone wants to be working in the rain, but you know, we gotta get some stuff done and there's an older way of doing it, so. Well, these small jobs always bite me in the butt because they always turn out to be like this. I mean, dealing with the amount of concrete in here, dealing with the deck, I mean, dealing with all these little things, especially that concrete and making that work, but we made it right. We made the drain perfect. We have a four inch lip at the door. Well, it was a big surprise opening up the garage ceiling and seeing wall tight. It wasn't done extremely well, but we topped it off and it wasn't that big of a deal in the end. We had a little bit of mold in there and it was a very, it was a surface mold. There was a small leak coming in when there was a heavy rain. We've had Steve in to cock the front flashing there, stopping any more rain from penetrating in that garage. I can actually close off the garage. Now we're going to paint it and give it back to them. The storm door will act as a windbreaker, a bit of a rain barrier. Uh, this particular model, uh, there's some ventilation, a retractable screen. The best door in the market, if it's not installed properly, it's not going to work properly. And we make the door fit the opening, not the opening fit the door. So if I were to just paint the issue, stain kill it, spot paint it, you're going to see a shadow, uh, a flash on the ceiling, and it's not going to look like one uniform, complete, flat surface. If you want it done right, if you want it to look professional and, and uniform, just paint the whole ceiling. You know, it'll take me a couple hours, but it's going to look that much better in the end. That looks really good. Looks really good. 
Okay, you know what? That's uh, I'm okay with that. The sump pump right there, right it's in the corner. Good it's location. Unfortunate, but yeah, they, like when they finish this basement, they can close off this room. I did talk to them a little bit about this, where they would like it for the future. So this is where we decided to put it. Hands are tied. Okay, put the drain into the weeping system. Might as well put in a sump pump. And exactly. I like that you directed it over to the far side rather than That's here. That's right. Very nice. Yeah, did pretty good here, buddy. Thank you very much, man. Good to go. Couldn't do it without you. Yeah, I like your... You like the get-up? Yeah. Yeah, maybe I'll bring you some fish later. Hi, <laughs> Arg. Hi. Yeah. How you doing? Steven? Oh, Welcome very. Back. I know, you're afraid to touch Jennifer. me. Hi. Wow. See? Look at him. <laughs> you look like you should be on a ship. <laughs> this is all for you. <laughs> well, let's start off. Let's, let's talk about the front of the house. Oh, okay. Yes. Uh, you can tell now that uh, they came in and they actually cocked everything, rubberized caulking. Yeah, and absolutely. So there's no more cracks, no more really worries of rain. Is that true, Pat? Come on in out of the rain. Great. Now, you remember when we first came in here, we had that wonderful mold spot that was right there, and it's yeah. definite signs of water penetration where, where the front of the garage meets the house. So, of course, I'm going to ask Damon, like I normally do, take it all down, let's inspect it, let's find out why someone got wet. I remember this. <laughs> it was a, a water test. But in every piece of drywall is? It is mold and water resistant. Yeah. That's yes. all we use. Looks good. Well, okay. let's go on the inside, and we'll show you some of the other things that we did. Oh, nice. It was quite a lot of work, and remember the last time we brought you in, you saw that wonderful, huge, thick piece of concrete on a bouncy floor. All the right products, all the right tile. It looks gorgeous. We hired a home inspector to find what potentially, you know, incremental charges or, you know, things that we're going to have to pay for down the road. And not identifying the tiles as being a significant issue was a big thing for us because, you know, to, re to get somebody to come in and take up the tile and, and, and fix it properly is quite costly to do that. We had this big subject that it was warmest in the basement and then colder upstairs. Now, simply by taping up and fixing all the holes in the basement and the main trunk line and all the exhaust lines that come off the main trunk, he has increased the flow upstairs by 20% airflow. Wow. That's so, huge. amazing, man. Yeah, Let's take a look at the deck. All right. And I love my guys because they, they yeah. there is no such thing as overkill. But 42 inches on the rail height, by code, really strong, extra strong. What was missing before was no 4x4s. Right. 2x2s being strapped onto 2x8 rails, just unacceptable. Now you can play football up here, you can do what you want, you're not going to go <laughs> through. Cool. But you kind of notice this deck isn't going yeah, anywhere. Exactly. There's no balance. Yeah. Before, yeah. It's almost yeah. like you're on a boat. Yeah. Yeah. There's none right? of that anymore, which is great. Look at your new sills. These are total precast. Everything was removed, installed, caulked around it. So I'm confident now that your house is watertight. That's that's my yeah, goal. Great. Let's make sure it's watertight from the outside. Then we'll work on the inside. Speaking of the inside, let's go down the stairs and I'll show you. Oh, nice, nice, eh? Wow, looks beautiful, uh, you guys. Really, the hardest part was dealing with this back door. And I was digging down, that's pulling out the stairs. Obviously, we need to lower down to get underneath the door with a center drain that is tied into the sump pump that goes inside the house. You did want to keep the door, right? Yeah. It's there, so why not work with it? It just made for one hell of a job, and I'm, yeah. I'm not kidding you. You can see how we had to break and come underneath and run the drain system with a clean out to the sump pump, which comes up and gets pumped directly back outside again. We have fixed everything for you. I mean, our whole goal was to make your home watertight. I think we've achieved yeah, that. I think Damon good. and the guys, what do you think of the team? We love them. We're actually going to kind of miss them being around. They get little hugs or something. Uh, like that's how I get paid. Come on. <laughs> nice. He gets paid, I get the change, right? <laughs> <laughs> We wanted to make a donation to the uh, to the, the homes for foundation. You. Oh, you know what? That is so appreciated. That's thank just going to make much. sure that the next generation yeah. make it right. Thank you. Pleasure to meet you. And Thanks. thank you so much. Okay. You just made my day. Look at that. I'm yeah, smiling. Okay.